daybreak, about a quarter to seven. And joining us this morning is Jeff Ryland, a therapist at Gunderson Health System to discuss National Bullying Awareness Month. Jeff, thanks for being here. We are over and over again about uh, efforts across the country and even here in our area to reduce bullying. How common is it today? I mean, has any of that stuff actually worked? How, how prevalent is bullying in today's society? Well, it's an excellent question. People do wonder how common bullying is. And we know just from research, and, and nobody has looked specifically at the Cooley region, can we extrapolate from data around the country when we do take snapshots of that in various school districts. It looks like about one out of every three children experience being bullied before they graduate from high school. But if you count the kids who witness bullying and also the kids who engage in bullying behavior, we're looking at closer to 70% of children who are part of any group will experience some part of or several different parts of being bullied or being in the bullying cycle, we'll call it. You mentioned children witnessing the bullying. If you are a child and you see somebody being bullied, what should you do? Why is it important to not just sit, sit there and do nothing? Well, I think it's hard to not to, to, to do something because it requires having a lot of skill of being assertive to, to stand up to friends or kids you want to be uh, belong to their group and to say hey that's not okay or why are we doing that or knock it off I think it takes a tremendous amount of courage for kids to do that although many kids are learning to become upstanders we use the language upstanders for kids who just don't watch it but they actually do something things that can, kids can do a more subtle perhaps would be uh, to talk to the child who's been picked on later and say I'm sorry that's happened for you or I wish that that wouldn't happen or why don't you sit with me me at lunch instead so to become friends to the child who's being picked on but I do feel the peer pressure especially as kids move out of elementary school into middle school is pretty intense everybody thinks bullying they think kids in the schoolyard kids in the cafeteria how common is it amongst adults like at the workplace <laughs> I wish I could answer that. I'm more of a child specialist, so I don't have any good information about adult bullying. But it isn't just in the schoolyard cafeteria. Bullying happens in any environment where kids gather. And one of the things, uh, one of the pieces of research that came out this summer in the journal Pediatrics was that bullying that happens between siblings, older siblings calling younger siblings names, uh, the, those kinds of behaviors, is every bit as psychologically damaging as being bullied in a classroom or in the playground. When you say psychologically damaging, how long can the effects last? What are some of the effects of, of prolonged bullying if it's not just, you know, a one-time thing? Yeah, uh, even if it is a one-time thing, it really depends on a lot of factors, how, how resilient the child is, how powerful or how uh, traumatic the bullying experience was. Uh, many children sur obviously survive being bullied. Uh, they struggle, kids who perhaps aren't as resilient or perhaps the bullying was more long-term may struggle with issues of self-esteem. They may struggle with health problems down the road. Uh, there's some evidence that kids who are part of the bullying cycle have issues, health issues related to bullying, depression, anxiety, those kinds of things that occur later in life. Uh, and some of it related to being bullied. I don't think we can uh, track it directly to that. It's more of a correlation. Kids who are bullied also have health care problems later in life. Kids who are part of the bullying cycle as bullies or kids who are bully victims, they do both, are probably at risk as well. The solutions you mentioned for someone, say, who witnesses a child being bullied were all very kind of peaceful solutions. Talk to them, maybe talk to a, a teacher, a parent. Why is it important, is it important, that uh, if someone is being bullied, they don't bully back? They don't just go get two friends and say, well, now I'm going to go pick on you. Well, I think we've got an entire uh, civilization history uh, that we've got plenty of evidence that violence doesn't really work that uh, using force is not really an effective problem-solving solution, especially in interpersonal relationships. Uh, I think that while some people think that that might be good old-fashioned advice, I think that the risks of somebody getting harmed are much higher and it's not a healthy problem-solving strategy. We really want kids to talk to adults to learn because they're still learning how to problem-solve in their life and that's why getting help from adults, teachers, coaches, friends, parents, pastors can be really helpful. All right, Jeff Ryland joining us for Bullying Awareness Month. Jeff, thanks very much for being here. I also want to mention Gunderson does have a bullying webpage, Together Against Bullying, all one word, dot org, where you can find more information. Gunderson and Kohl's department stores are also teaming up to raise money for bullying prevention. Kohl's is selling Charlie Brown books and toys for $5 with all the money then going to Gunderson Medical Foundation and Gunderson Health Systems Together Against Bullying program. The books and toys are available now all the way through the end of December. Alex.